Hello everyone and welcome to the MATLAB Simulink for the Absolute Beginner Tutorial. In the next 45 minutes, I'm going to teach you the fundamentals of Simulink and you should be able to develop three models from scratch. My name is Ryan Ahmad. I'm an engineering professor and best-selling Udemy instructor. I hold a doctorate degree in engineering and have been working with MATLAB and Simulink for over 10 years in both industrial and academic settings. In this tutorial, you're going to receive a detailed explanation of fundamental Simulink programming concepts. Simulink is a great software tool that enables anyone to model, simulate, analyze electrical, mechanical, and hydraulic system in a fun and easy way. The tool is so powerful and used globally by most engineering firms because you can easily use it to build complex system graphically using ready-to-use blocks from extensive library. In this tutorial, we will build three Simulink projects together in a fun and easy way. There is no prior experience required. Even if you have never used MATLAB or Simulink before, don't worry. In this tutorial, you will have a clear video explanation of each of the topics we're gonna be covering. We will start from the basics and gradually build up your knowledge. If you want to learn more about MATLAB and Simulink, check out the link below. And for more videos to come, subscribe to the channel and let's get started with the first project. So what is Simulink? Simulink is a simple and user-friendly tool that we can use to develop, simulate, analyze, and study any system in a graphical way. So instead of writing codes of these systems from scratch, which is a tedious and time-consuming job, we can use Simulink library and simply drag and drop all the blocks we need to represent any system. Let's start by downloading MATLAB and Simulink. You can find the detailed download steps by following the link below. In this tutorial, we'll build three practical beginner's level projects. Before we start building our models, I will make sure to explain all the related theoretical fundamentals first. In the first project, we'll learn how to generate, display, and export source generating sine wave and tune its parameters. After completing the first project, students will be able to select blocks from the Simulink library, add up and view two signals in Simulink, generate sine wave and tune its parameters, change the model configuration parameters and get fine-tuned data export a variable into the workspace and plot it, magnify a signal using a gain multiplier. In the second project, we'll learn how to develop a mathematical equation using Simulink. We'll develop an equation to convert temperature readings from Celsius to Fahrenheit. After completing the first project, students will be able to implement mathematical equations in Simulink, call a Simulink model from an M script, feed data from the user and use it in the model, in the third project, we'll learn how to implement a logic in Simulink, including if-else statements. After completing the project, you will be able to develop an if-else statement in Simulink, design a selector switch to develop your own logic. Let's get started with the first project. So in this project, we're going to learn how to generate sine waves, add them together, and display them in Simulink. Again, this project is quite a simple project, but it will teach you a lot of fundamentals on how to use Simulink, how to deal with it, how to plot variables. So let's start with the first project. All right, so the objective is to basically build this final project as we can see here. So you will see that we have three generating sine waves, and the plan is to have these sine waves generated at various frequencies. We're gonna add them up, and the plan is to generate or view uh, these signals together. And then we're going to learn how to export these signals to the workspace. If you're not familiar with MATLAB or Simulink, again, we're going to start from scratch. I'm going to show you how to do that from scratch. All right, so let's start with blank page. So as you can see, when you open MATLAB for the first time, that's what you're going to see. So on your left-hand side, you will see the current folder. That's where you store basically all your files or all your models you're going to be working on. On the right hand side here, you will see all the workspace. So if you define any variable, these variables or any array, these variables or arrays are going to be shown here on the right hand side. All right. It's MATLAB is very easy to deal with. It's very powerful and it's very visual. So you can easily view all the parameters here. I'm going to show you right now. In the center here, you will see the command window. That's where you basically write any commands in, uh, in the MATLAB language, what we call it M script. So let's take a look at a very simple example. Let's assume that I need to add just two numbers, okay? So I'm gonna write X equals five, for example, and press enter. Once you do that, you will see that, you know, MATLAB replies back when you say X equals five, 
That means you're assigning number five to a variable x. MATLAB replies back and say, okay, now we have a variable that's x equals five. And on the right-hand side here in the workspace, you will see there is a variable that's called x has been created with a value of five, min max is five, which is great. Now you can see all the parameters you are working with. Okay, let's define y, for example, equal three, for instance, all right? And, and that's what you're gonna see. So you see another variable that's called y that has been MATLAB, that has been uh, generated, and you can view it here as well. Let's assume they wanna add these two parameters. So you're gonna define z, for example, equals x plus y. All right, and you will see the response is eight. So the MATLAB replies back with the answer. And on the right hand side, you will see the variable Z has been created, which is a value of eight. All right. Again, this course is not um, dedicated to, um, to view or to learn basically how to write M scripts. Our main focus is to develop models in Simulink, which is an extremely visual, powerful tool that's provided by MathWorks. So let's take a look at how can we develop models in Simulink. The first step is, okay, where is Simulink? So the first step is we need to initiate or start the Simulink library. So here, that's where you can start the Simulink library. Just click on it and the library will open. In this library, you will see every single block or mathematical block you would ever imagine. So if you want, if you want to, for example, generate like, you know, like signals, you can generate a constant, you can generate a ramp, you can generate sine wave, cosine, like whatever signal you're thinking of, you can actually generate it here using uh, Simulink. So let's, let's go through these different blocks. So you can see that here we have so many different libraries. So you will see we have neural network library, aerospace library, so many different uh, libraries. And our main focus here, again, th since this course is kind of um, a beginner's course, we're gonna start from scratch. So our main focus, we're gonna be on the Simulink main library, okay? So if you take a look, you will see that here you have all the sources that you wanted to generate, including if you wanna generate a step, ramp, constant, any parameter, you can actually do that here. If you want to view these signals, you can go to syncs. That's where you actually sync these signals, whatever. So what you could do that you can view these signals over on a scope, on exported um, to workspace. I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show you how to do that. And if you want to go to continuous, then we can do every mathematical oper operation you would think of. So if we can um, integrate a signal, differentiate a signal, we can add a time delay, create a controller. We're going to do a lot of fun projects um, uh, with Simulink. All right. Uh, if we go to commonly used blocks, here you can see all, if you want to multiply a signal, for example, magnify it, we can use a gain. If you want to delay a signal, we can add a delay. If you want to sum two signals, we can add summation. So these are just, you know, quick libraries ready, made for you. You can just drag and drop, and that's the power of Simulink, all right? So let's start with, again, with our first project, which is how can we create um, uh, a sign generating wave and display it, sum them together and display it. All right, so to start a new Simulink model, you will just gonna click here, all right, to new model. Once you click on the new model, then that will open a blank page where you can simply drag and drop whatever block you need in here, all right? So let's start with the first, with the first step. So as you can see here, we wanted to generate sine waves, correct? So if you can go to sources, you will see that here, this is the sine wave block that we're looking for. If you drag and drop that block here, you will basically create a sine wave. Okay, so the question is, how can we tune the parameters? So if you want to change the amplitude of that sine wave, or if you wanna change the frequency of the sine wave, all these parameters are already defined. What you can do is just double click on the block. It will open another library. Here you can tune the amplitude. So here of amplitude one, bias, if you wanna shift that signal up and down, frequency, which is how fast you're gonna repeat that sine wave. So here we are talking about one rad per second. And what we're looking for is we need to create three sine waves at three different frequencies, okay? The objective is to have them with the same amplitude. So this is the first signal, okay? Click okay, we're good with it. Frequency is one, we're good. All right, so I need to create another two sine waves. 
So it's actually very simple to copy and paste within Simulink. So what you could do is that you can right click, okay, and drag and drop. So drag and drop, that will create an additional sine wave block. Again, one more time, drag and drop will create an additional sine wave, all right? First one, frequency one rad per second. Second one, we're gonna make a frequency of two rad per second. Or maybe let's make them five rad per second, for instance. Third one, we're gonna make it frequency of 10 rad per second. So now we have created three sine waves, okay? The question is, okay, like I need to view these signals. I wanna see them. I wanna see if I'm actually like, um, uh, expect what I expect is actually right. So what you could do again, Simulink is extremely powerful. You can just go to the Sings library and drag and drop basically a scope, as you can see here. A scope is simply um, kind of a data display. So whatever signal we're going to be displayed on that scope, we're going to be connected to that scope. We're going to be displayed. All right. All right. So let's start. So the first step is okay. Um, that scope has only one input, correct? We need to change that scope to make it having three basically inputs. So what you could do with that, again, you can double click on it, go to the settings, change the number of axes to three, all right? And that will create basically a scope, as you can see here, a scope with three different signals, and that's what we're looking for. If you go here, you will see that we have a scope with three inputs, all right? Okay, so how can we connect these? Again, it's very simple. Just drag, drag and drop here, connecting the first sine wave to the first input, second sine wave to the second input, and third sine wave to the third input. Click Save, all right? And that will create, you have to name it, so we're gonna name it Project, for example, Trial 1. Okay, now we're good. So, okay, how can we play it? How can we run it? Again, it's very simple. You can just click on Run, all right? And, that's it. Then you can actually view the sine waves. If you click on this button, which is auto scale, it was just gonna auto scale the signals. Actually, it's pretty interesting. So the first signal as we expected, actually showing again amplitude of one with a certain frequency of one rad per second, which is kind of slow. Second one was showing again amplitude of one, but it's a little bit faster. Third one, again, amplitude the same, the same amplitude but it's faster frequency because we changed it to 10 rad per second, all right? So the first question is, okay, why that signal is, doesn't look very smooth? Like it looks like, a, like we are not capturing the entire sine wave. Actually, that's due to the model configuration parameters. So what we could do is that if you go to simulations, model configuration parameters, all right? You will see that here, this is the solver, okay? I don't wanna go into like the entire math of how these solver, solvers work. The whole idea is that we're trying to take different samples at different time intervals. Here, the sample size with the maximum sample size is set to auto. And what we need to do that we need to increase that sample, um, reduce that sample time. So what I'm gonna do is gonna reduce that sample time to make it, let's say 0.01 seconds, which means that every 0.01 seconds I will try to take a sample, okay? Again, here, this is a variable variable step solver, okay? So we're changing the variable step or changing the step over time. However, the maximum step size is 0.01, which means the maximum step I'm gonna take is 0.01 seconds, which means I'm having a higher resolution signal, okay? Click apply, click okay. All right, the signal didn't change, why? Because it didn't run the model, let's run it again. Once you run it, and you go here, actually the you will see the signal is pretty smooth. Now, why? Because now we have a higher resolution or higher accurate um, signal, all right? Okay, so by now you know how to, again, become familiar with the Simulink library. Now you know how to drag and drop different sine waves, generating waves. Now you know how to change the frequency of these sine waves, how to plot these sine waves, but we haven't done the, the core of the exercise, which is how can we add the signals together? Actually, that's pretty simple. If you go to the commonly used blocks, you would see that there is a sum, summation block. Okay, so if you can, again, drag and drop that summation block in here, all right? And if you, if you look at it, you will see that there is two inputs to that summation block, all right? Okay, 
now we have three inputs, not two. So what we need to do is that we need to change the number of inputs going into the addition or the summation block. Again, all the parameters, all the configuration parameters in Simulink, just double click on the block, it will open all of them. Double click. It will show the list of signs. Okay, what signs do we, how many signs do we need? So we'll see that there's plus, plus, and what we need to do that, we need to add an additional plus. That means I'm defining that we have three inputs going into the summation block. Click OK, and you'll see there's an additional block has been added. Okay, all right, so let's connect. So we're going to connect this to here, to the first input, correct? Connect the second, to the second input, sorry. Connect the second one to the second input, and connect the third one to the third input, all right? Okay, and you'll see that the summation block, there's an output coming out of the summation block. We need to view that output too. All right, so what we could do again, we can go to the Simulink library, drag and drop a sync block, correct? So again, a drag and drop a floating sc or a scope, scope here, with one uh, with one input, connect to the output, and click save, and then you can run it, all right? So let's run it. So when we run it, and we click on um, the auto scale, that's a signal. That's actually a summation of all the inputs going into the summation block. And that's the power of simulating. You don't need to worry about the function name or how to define that sine wave or how to set any of these parameters. It's very easy, drag and drop, addition, and that's it. All right? Okay. So now we become familiar with MATLAB in general. We become familiar with Simulink. Now we know how to add these different signs uh, sign signals. Now what we need to do is that we need to do what we call it export to workspace. All right. So now I have a new signal, this signal. Okay. This signal is actually the output or the outcome of our model. What we need to do is that we need to take that signal and export it somehow to the workspace. Okay. When I say export to the workspace, that means I'm exporting it here. All right. Why? Because once I have it in the workspace, then I can develop scripts, for example, to deal with that signal. I can plot that signal. I can do, I can do so many different things with it. And that's what I'm going to do right now. All right. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go again to the Syncs library. All right. Syncs library. And you will find a block, which is a very powerful block that basically call it two workspace. Okay, so we're going to drag and drop that block in here, all right? We need to change the name of the signal. So what we could do that we double click on it and change the name of the signal. I'm going to change it, for example, to summation out, for example. And that would be the name of the signal, all right? Or let's call it sum out, just for to make it easy. So now we have a, a block that's called sum out, and we need to connect this basically to the output, all right? Once you click save, click run, then you ran the model, looks good. And what you could see that you could see there's an actual new variable that has been create has been created in the workspace. They will call it sum out. All right. This this step is very critical because this is actually the linkage between Simulink and the general MATLAB or the general um, if you want to develop any M script, we can actually do that translation from the Simulink library to here. All right. So any signal we are interested in um, in Simulink, we can actually drop it to the workspace using this technique. All right. All right. So now I have a signal. If we double click on it, sum out, you will see that actually this signal is extremely uh, helpful. Why? Because it's an actual structure. Okay. Again, if you guys are not familiar with the structure, it's just the idea is we have a variable that consists of two vectors. So we have time. And we have our data, which is the actual data, which is summation of all the sign um, signals that we had before. All right, so let's, for example, if I wanted to plot, for example, this sine wave, okay, how can we do it? So the command in the command window is actually called plot, if you want to plot any signal. And then what we're going to do is that we're going to write the name of that variable, which is sum. We call it sum out, right? Sum out. And we have the first vector, which is called data, right? So we're going to call data. That's the first vector, all right? And that should basically plot the signal, as you can see here. All right, so what we did is actually we exported a signal from Simulink back to the workspace. 
and then we actually plotted it in an M script or in a code format. All right, and that's the exact same signal that we actually had it here in the scope. It's exactly the same. All right. Okay. All right, and uh, that concludes the first section. Just to conclude, um, so what we learned so far is that we learned how to become familiar with the MATLAB um, environment. How can we add two sine waves? How can we create a simulating model from scratch? And congratulations, you made you created the first project. I hope you guys figured out how to do that quiz. So in the quiz, um, I ask you to take that signal, which is basically the summation of all the, these sine waves, and multiply it by a gain or a multiplier. Okay. So again, I, I hope it was it wasn't too difficult. So what you could do again, you can go to continue commonly used blocks or continuous blocks. Mainly, it's in commonly used blocks. You will see there's a block called gain. Okay. Again, it has an input, has an output, so it looks pretty good. You're just going to drag and drop the gain, and you can put it here, all right, to basically connect. It's, Simulink is actually pretty powerful, because if once you drag the block in there, it will understand um, that, you know, you can connect the input and output right away. So if you place it on an actual signal, it will divide that signal in half, so you can simply do it that way. So... What you could see is, okay, now we have a gain, we want to multiply, for example, by, let's say, 5, for example. That means magnifying the signal, magnifying whatever input here by a factor of 5. Click OK. Okay, click Save. And what we need to do right now is that we need to view the signal before and after the magnifier. Okay, so what we can actually do is that we can, okay, we can take that block, create an additional block. Okay, again, right click and drag and show the signal before and after, all right? So we're gonna show the signal before the multiplier and after the multiplier, okay? I'm gonna click Save, we're gonna click Run, and you can actually view the signal here. So you will see the signal before the multiplier, it's the amplitude, the maximum amplitude is around three. Once you show this, you see the maximum amplitude is actually around 15, which means you actually multiply it by gain or multiply it by, um, by a factor, all right? Okay, so let's see the last exercise, which is, okay, what if I wanted to view these two, two signals together? All right, so there's an actual block that you can use that we call it a MUX or a multiplexer, okay? So if you add that multiplexer block in here, okay, let's keep that away. What you can actually do is that you can add more than one signal and mix them together to become just one signal so you can view them both on just one scope instead of two all right actually so what let, let's let's see how can we do it so if we take that multiplexer we're just going to add the signal before the gain after the gain all right and we're going to get on one just one block here one scope connect that scope together actually let's delete this all right connect this to here okay okay looks good click save click run open up the scope it's pretty interesting so what you could see that you can see that actually you can plot more than one signal using just one scope okay by using that multiplexer it's actually very powerful why because now you can view more than one signal on the actual just single scope so you can see the variation or relationship between more than one signal together and instead of plotting them separately on different scopes all right so this is the original signal. This is the magnified signal with a gain of five, okay? Now you can do whatever you want basically with Simulink. So I hope you guys enjoyed that quiz and let's see you on, um, let's see you in the next project. So in this project, we're going to see how can we implement a mathematical equations in Simulink. So we're gonna see how can we take an input, temperature input, in Celsius and convert it basically to Fahrenheit. Again, it's really simple exercise, but it will teach you a lot of basics fundamentals of Simulink. So let's get started. So all right. So if you look here, you will see that basically what we want to do is that we wanted to 
basically implement whatever happening in the background here when you write for example on google we want to convert from celsius to fahrenheit so let's say if you enter for example zero what you're going to see is 32 it's equivalent to 32 fahrenheit all right so what we want to do is that we're going to implement a simulink model that takes whatever temperature again in celsius and do that conversion so what is that equation again the equation is very simple and this is basically the equation you get whatever temperature in Celsius, you multiply it by 9, divide by 5, and then you add 32. So the, out, the output or the outcome will be temperature in Fahrenheit. So let's take, a, let's take a look at an example. If we wanted, for example, to convert 20 degrees C to Fahrenheit, we're just going to multiply the 20 degrees C, or substitute in that equation, multiply it by 9, divide by 5, and then you add 32. So the outcome or the output will be 65 um, uh, 68 Fahrenheit, all right? So if we, let's take a look at the table. So basically this is a table that summarizes all the conversion. So zero degree C, that's basically kind of the freezing point or the melting point of water is basically 32 Fahrenheit. As you go up, let's say to six degree C, it becomes 42. And as you go down to let's say minus 50 degree C, that will be minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? So let's take a look at how can we implement basically um, this mathematical equation in Simulink. So let's get started. So we're gonna create again, we're gonna go to the Simulink library, all right? And we're gonna do to create a new, a new model. We're gonna create, click here, that would create a new model. And what we're gonna do is that we need, first of all, a gain, okay? Even if it is in a very simple form that multiplies the whatever number, whatever input, by the constant, which is in our case here, if we go back to our equation, that would be that factor, 9 divided by 5, okay? So let's do this. So we're going to go to commonly used blocks. You're going to see basically that we have a gain block, drag and drop, as we mentioned earlier. So we're going to have a gain, okay? Let's minimize that. So we have a gain, and what we're gonna do is that we can double click on it and basically write nine, nine divided by five, right? So that would be our, our gain, correct? Okay, great. The next step is that we need, there is an addition somewhere. So we need to add the summation block. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna drag a summation block. So we want it to sum whatever is coming out of here, right? We're gonna sum it or add it by constant, right? So the 32 constant. So if you go back, you will see that there is a 32, so plus, and there is 32, right? And 32, that 32 number doesn't change, so there is no point of adding it as a variable and defining it, for example, in M script. You can just include it as a constant, and that's it. So let's see how can we do that. I'm going to go here to the library again. It's kind of constant, so you can use a constant here, okay? So I'm going to drag and drop a constant double click on it and and write 32, right? And then you are gonna do that, you're gonna connect basically these two together. And that's it, that's pretty much it. You need an input here, we're gonna see how can we do that. And whatever input, we multiply it by nine over five, and then we're gonna add 32 to it, okay? So if you wanna plot that, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna go to sinks, and we're gonna go to scope, all right? And you can drag and drop a scope. Or what you could do that you can drag or drop what we call it the display. The display is actually pretty interesting because it just shows like one instant one instance in time. So just drag and drop. That will be my display connected to here. Okay. And we're gonna do that. We're gonna create basically um, an input. So let's give it a shot. Let's let's try. So we're gonna if you wanted to basically add another constant, what we're gonna do is you can right click. We want to make a copy of this constant. So we're gonna right click and drag and drop, okay? So keep clicking and drag and drop, that's kind of copy paste basically in Simulink environment, all right? Okay, let's minimize that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect this to here and let's let's check it out. Let's see if it's actually working or not, okay? So if we double click on it, let's see if we want it to convert from zero, for example. If we click save, all right? That we're gonna ask me where to save it. We're gonna call it project two project two trial, okay? Because we have another project two that I've created earlier. 
and that's pretty much it let's click run as we mentioned before once we click run that will run the entire model so we'll just click run and basically that's the output let's zoom in so you guys can see so that's that's my output okay so it's 32 which is basically what we expect if we put zero celsius that would be equivalent to 32 fahrenheit okay excellent let's maybe try another another example so let's see we have that table right so let's see just to make sure that the actual function again it's a very simple function very simple equation but let's double double check for example let's put six degrees if we zoom in if we put six degrees that would be equivalent to 42.8 okay so let's try it so we're gonna go here we're gonna try let's say six degrees press enter click save click run and that will be 42.8 okay then then I'm, I'm confident this one works so the next step is okay what we what we want is we want to basically create a script and that's kind of a next next um, next step in, in this model that takes the input from the user so instead of going there every time and basically put whatever six or five or whatever what we want is basically when we run the model when we run an M script what we're going to do is that basically and ask the user to enter the temperature in Celsius and the model will run afterwards and basically generate whatever output in Fahrenheit let's take a look let's see how can we do that so the first step is what we want to do here and I don't want you to be like confused so what you're gonna do is when you open MATLAB for the first time this is basically the MATLAB you're gonna get right and if you guys recall we had a simulink and that's kind of a library within MATLAB right that's where you drag and drop blocks pretty ready-made blocks here what we're gonna do is that we wanted to basically create a MATLAB script when I say script that means lines of code that you can execute in basically um, sequential manner so all these basically commands we're going to be uh, implemented and what we're going to do is that we're going to call a script we're going to run basically a script and that script what we're going to do with that script we're going to basically run and we're going to call the simulink model okay let's take a look so we're going to create new script all right and when we do this basically what we're going to do is that we to call the script we're going to call basically simulate so the simulate command is basically a command that can be used to run a simulink model so we're going to simulate and then you're going to add basically the name of the project that we had so our project was called project project 2 trial right okay great and it was okay let's give it a shot so simulate let's see if this works or not so we want to save it so you're going to ask me to save let's call it project project 2 trial run okay all right okay so let's run it so it will tell me okay on there is an issue here so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that first of all the name is right so it's project so it's project underscore two it's project two so project two underscore trial let's give it a run one more time okay so it worked no problem so if we go back here that means the model basically ran for just once all right so what we can do it's basically we in the simulink in the script we can define this as just a, as an x for example where x is a variable that will take its value when we run the m script okay so let's click ok what we're gonna do here is gonna come here and we're gonna define a variable that's called x and then let's say divide it as let's say our zero okay so again here this command we're gonna write x equals zero first and then we're gonna simulate the model simple like that click run okay and then it shows 32 okay great let's run it one more time let's make it write, write 10 for example click save click run and then it becomes 50 okay so we're good okay but that didn't solve the problem right what we need that we need to basically have um, kind of a message that comes to the comes to the user where the user is going to be entering this value okay all right so let's see how can we do that so in order to do this what we're going to do that we need to basically um, write what we call it the command is called prompt okay let's see how can we do this okay let's click save here and let's go to our project to run okay so this is basically these are the commands that I was referring to so in very simple form what we wanted to do is we want to display we're going to ask the customer let's say what are the temperature in degree C so that will be the question that's going to be prompt basically to the customer 
okay, or the user. All right, and then, so this is the first command, and and then whatever input the customer gonna, or the user is going to feed, that will be our prompt, right? That will be an input, and they're going to be put in a variable that's called C, which is going to be very similar to before. Then we can simulate the model, and that's it. So in our case here, we actually call that variable X in our model, and what we want to do is that we want to run project 2, and we're going to call it basically trial, right? Okay. Okay, let's click save and let's run it and see what's going to happen. Let's click run. And what you could see here is that you can see that basically there's a question that has been prompt, which is, what is the temperature in degree C? And you can see that MATLAB is showing you this waiting for an input. So it executed a couple of lines, but then it stopped. It's just waiting for an input from the user. Okay, so let's enter our whatever value. Let's click, for example, zero and click, click enter. And that's it. If you go back, you will see that basically display here, project two trial, okay, showing showing our 32. If you wanted to clear basically the screen, we're gonna create, we're gonna write CLC, I'm gonna, can, we can as well write clear all, okay? And close all to close all the windows, okay? Let's run it one more time. So we're gonna come here, click run, and they're going to ask me, okay, what is the temperature again in degree C? So let's say the temperature is, let's say, our 6 degrees. Click enter. And you will, you will watch that basically here it shows 42.8, which is our number that we are expecting before. In addition, you can check basically all the variables that have been you have been working on, including the input from the customer or the user and the output of MATLAB as well in our workspace. Okay. So what you could see that you can see our X, which is our input, and you can see the output as well, or T out, okay? So basically, this is the timeout, that's the actual vector, or time vector, I don't want to confuse you here, but basically, basically, this is the input X, which has been fed, or input, by the, by the user, all right? And that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoy that project, and see you in the next project. So in this project, we're going to learn how to develop or implement an if statement in Simulink. If any of you guys have any um, prior experience in programming languages, you're going to go through if, con um, you're going to probably know about if condition. And let's see how can we do that in basically in a graphical form in Simulink. All right. So that's basically these models we're going to do, we're going to implement um, in this exercise. Let's start again with basically a new, completely new model, and let's see how can we do that. So the first exercise, what we're going to do is that we wanted to, let's say, feed in a sine wave, all right? And we want it to basically implement a logic that can enable the positive portion. So let's say if, for example, the input of the sine wave is positive, so you're above zero, Let's say we're going to select, for example, an out output that's 1, for example, raise a flag that's 1. And if it's minus, we're going to generate a minus 1, for example. Okay, So let's see how can we do that. You, you can see that the idea is here, we wanted to implement kind of a logic. Kind of if condition, for example, x or the input is positive, we'll do this. If x is negative, we're going to do this. Let's do this. All right. So the first step is we're going to go again. To our, um, to our library, we know that we want an input, which is sine wave. So that, again, will be in sources. So we're going to see there is sources, there is sinks. I'm going to go to sources here. And what we're going to do is that we're going to go down and basically select a sine wave, and that will be our input. You need to recall that if you double-click on the sine wave, you will see that the amplitude here is 1. All right. So that means the maximum amplitude of the sine wave is 1, and will the, the minimum or the least point is going to be minus 1. Okay. Click OK. We're good. The next step is that we wanted to basically develop, again, kind of logic. So if you go to signal routing, you will see that there is a block that's called switch. Okay, If you drag and drop basically that switch, all right, and let's zoom in a little bit, you will see that basically it kind of makes sense, right? It's kind of a switch. It will select based on the signal here in the center if, for example, whatever input coming here on this on, on this input is more or greater than zero, we're going to select this. If not, we're going to select this. That's pretty much an if condition, okay? All right, so what we're going to do is that we're going to use that sine wave, we're going to use it as an input, that will be my deciding factor, 
right? And then we're gonna see that, okay, if my, if my input, whatever input it is in time, domain, if it's greater than zero, let's for example, input output uh, a one, okay? So we're gonna do, we're gonna go to continuous, or we can go for example to sources, we're gonna go to a constant, drag and drop the constant, okay? And we're gonna connect that one to here, okay? Again, if you wanted to copy basically uh, a constant, again we're right. We're gonna right click, and keep keep clicking and move and move it. That will basically copy a new block. We're gonna connect this to here, and let's call this, for example, minus one. Okay. What we are implementing is kind of um, kind of a sign, like a sign implementation. We're just checking if the signal is positive. We're gonna generate one. If it's negative, we're gonna generate minus one. Okay. In a very simple form. All right. Okay, great. So let's see. Let's plot the output, for example. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go here, and we're gonna go to if we wanna plot something, we're just gonna go to things, and drag and drop a scope. Okay. I'm gonna connect the scope to the output. Click save, and let's save it as project, as project three. Let's call it trial. Okay. Let's click save. All right. And let's run it. It might not work, but let's give it a shot, okay? So what we could see here is that, okay, the model ran, no problem. And if we, if we double click on it and magnify it, it actually makes, makes a little bit of sense. Okay, so it shows one, obviously, okay? And then afterwards it shows minus one, which seems that is something is happening. But the best way to show this is basically by connecting or plotting the sine wave on the same graph as basically the scope, okay? We can do this by basically merging or combining two signals together. So what we could do is that we can go again to our library. I'm gonna go to signal routing, routing, and then I'm gonna drag and drop a multiplexer. Okay. Basically, this multiplexer basically combines whatever input coming in and basically put all all these signals just into one signal. So you can plot it here on that scope. Okay. Let's basically do this. Let's remove. Let's remove this. Let's connect this to here. What we want to do, we want to connect the logic or the output. Okay, we're going to connect the other one, going to be our input, which is a sine wave. We're going to connect these basic to the scope, click save, and let's run it. Let's double click on it. And that will basically plot basically both signals together. It's actually pretty good. That's what we're expecting. So as it's going positive, we're going to showing one. As it goes negative, we're showing minus one, and it keeps doing this. Okay. What if I wanted to simulate it for a longer period of time? So let's go here, for example, and and set it to a hundred. Click save, and let's run it again. Double click on it, and you will see something like this. Okay, it looks weird. It doesn't look like a sine wave anymore. Something something weird happened. So the problem here is that basically the model configuration parameters are set uh, for this for this step size. It's set to be um, uh, at at automatic at auto. Okay, so that's not the optimal scenario. Let's go and change the model configuration parameters to increase the resolution, which means the number of samples we're gonna be taking in time. We're gonna make it basically the time gonna be shorter. That means you're going to be collecting a lot more signals. That means the accuracy of the signals will be better, which means this signal should be more smooth as we go. All right, let's give it a shot. Let's see how can we do this. We go to simulations, model configuration parameters. And here, maximum step size, if you change it from auto, let's say to change it to 0.01, for example, which means 0.01 seconds. That's a time that we're going to take. That's a maximum step size. Okay, which means even if it's variable, the maximum time will be 0.01, which is really good. That means you're going to take a lot of samples within um, within a second. Let's click apply. Let's click OK. OK, click save and let's run it. Let's see. Hopefully it will, the signal will be more um, smooth, or more clear. Let's double click on it, magnify it. OK, that's... It's actually pretty good. That's what we're expecting. So as you can see that that's my sine wave is a lot more smoother now, it's a lot better. As you can see, as we basically, again, go positive, it will, the output will be one. As it goes negative, I'll be minus one. And that's it. That's how we can implement a very simple logic within um, simulate. all right? So the next exercise we're gonna do is that we wanted to implement a little bit more uh, complicated logic compared to the previous one. So we actually want to implement an actual if condition 
that basically implements this. So if the input is basically, that's kind of the pseudocode. So if the input is greater than 0.5, the output will be, let's multiply the output, the input by two. So I'm gonna multiply two, multiplies by the input, that would be the output. We're gonna say else if, if the input, for example, is less than zero, we're gonna multiply the input by four, and that'll be the output. If not, we're just gonna set it to 10, for example. Uh, basically, these kind of uh, this kind of if else condition is extremely important. We're gonna be we're using it a, a lot, basically in different applications in automotive industry, in the aerospace industry, and you will pretty much uh, apply it in in any in any uh, of your applications. So let's get started and see how can we implement that logic in Simulink. All right. So again, we're gonna start with a with a very new model here. And the first step is that we, since we have more than one, okay, it's it's better to stay away from the switch, basically, okay? So we're gonna do here, we're gonna actually implement an, a real if condition implemented in Simulink. Again, since Simulink is really easy tool to use, we're not gonna go and actually write a code if else condition. We're just gonna drag and drop a block that implements an if, and that's it. So if we go to ports and subsystems, you will see that there is an actual block that's called if, okay? So if you can drag and drop that block, and let's zoom in so you can see what, what's happening here. So that block takes one input here, and it basically checks. If that input U1 is greater than zero, we're gonna do something. If not, that will be my else, right? Okay, great, so that's the first step. So, all right. So what I need to do is that I need to test that basically block at some point. So we're gonna do, they're gonna cre actually create or input a sine wave. So that'll be, I'm gonna go to sources, I'm gonna go to a sine wave, drag and drop a sine wave, connect the sine wave to here, and that'll be the first input. Unfortunately here, these are only two, right? So they have if else, right? What we wanna do here is that we wanna implement more than one condition. So we need to add an additional if, if there, right? Or if else condition. So if you double click on it, you will see that basically number of inputs are gonna be one. Here, these are the condition. So the first condition of saying if u1 is greater than zero, that's the first condition. Here, I need to add an additional condition, okay? So what I'm gonna do is that I'm getting saying if u1 is greater than 0.5, right? That's what I wanna implement right here. And then I'm saying, let's say if the input, okay, is smaller than zero. So let's say if I'm saying if u1 is less than zero, Okay, that will be my second um, if condition. Let's make it a little bit better and I'm gonna click okay. So you could see that you can see that basically here an, an additional um, block or additional um, line has been created, which makes sense. Now we have three outputs, okay? All right, great. So what's happening here? So basically these, the output from that block, these are kind of the triggers that has to trigger something, okay? So in Simulink, what you could do is that if you can go again to our ports and subsystems, you will see that there is an if action subsystem. So if, if a specific condition occurs, we're just gonna go and trigger an action. That's kind of the body of the if condition. We can implement it here. So if you drag and drop, okay? Interestingly enough, what we wanna do, actually we need three of this, right? Because we need to have three basically actions that we could do. So we have the first action, action one, we have, an, again, right click and drag, that would be my action two. And again, one more time, that would be my action three, right? We're gonna connect the first action basically to here, correct? My second action to here, and my third action to here, okay? All right, great. Okay, perfect. That's great. So let's take a look at the first action. So let's start with the easy one. So that action, if you recall from our presentation, is if, if else, we're gonna set the output to 10. Okay, so let's go here, double click on it, and that will be my action, okay? So here, basically, I need to put just a block that basically has 10. So we're gonna delete the input, and we're gonna go to the constant sources, or commonly used blocks, have a constant, drag and drop the constant, and set it to 10, okay? I'm gonna click save, I'm gonna go up. Actually, that would be our project, project three trial. Okay, it needs to be saved again one more time. Let's call it three trial two, all right? 
Okay, if we go up, okay, that's great. So that's the first else condition. You can see that in the L, in the actual else, there's no input anymore because we need to set it 10 no matter what. So we can actually do it outside or using an external input or in, inside using an internal input as we have done here. We added just 10 as an input. Okay, great. So what we're gonna do is that, okay, we need to continue, keep going. So what we're gonna do here is if basically my input is greater than 0.5, we're gonna multiply the input by two, right? So we need to have a multiplication or gain of two. If you double click on it, what we need to do basically here is to add a multiplication of two. I hope you guys are, uh, are experts in, in signaling by now. We're gonna go here, drag and drop again, okay? And make it two, okay, great. Actually, we might need it at some point in time. Again, one more time, so let's click copy, we're gonna need it. We're gonna go up, we need to add here, the next condition is we're going to multiply by 4. So that will be my 4. We're going to go here, click paste, double, drag and drop, double click on it, make it 4. Click save. We're going to go up. And that's great. So that means basically the first block is, okay, is multiplied by 2. Second block is multiplied by 4. That's great. And then we have 10. All right. So in all these cases, I'm gonna have an input, right? So what we're gonna do, they just connect this base to my input. I'm gonna connect this again to my input, it's pretty much the same. And here we have 10 anyways, no matter what. So what's what happened next? What we need to do is that we need to test it. So we need to, what we're gonna do, they're gonna combine all these conditions. So that's why we're gonna use a block that's called merge, that merge all these signals together and plot them um, at the end. So let's do this. So what we're gonna do, they're gonna go here, we're gonna go to signals, signal routing, and you will see that there's a block that's called merge. Drag and drop the merge. We have only two, so we need to make it basically uh, three inputs. So that will be number of input three. All right, so that'll be the first block, second block, third, and we need to finally plot them basically somewhere. So we're gonna go to MATLAB, we're gonna go to the sinks, we're gonna go to scope, drag and drop, right? Okay, click save, and that should, let's give it a shot. Let's see what's gonna happen. So if we basically magnify this and take a look at it, it actually looks pretty interesting. I think that's what we're expecting. So the first step is if basically the input, so that's a kind of, it looks like a sine wave, right? Okay, great. So why don't we plot the actual input together on top of it? If you, if you guys recall, we did that before, that we go here to signal routing, we're gonna drag a, a multiplexer, right? And that multiplexer, basically, we're gonna take two signals. We're gonna take the, imp the, the output from the, um, from the actual logic, right? So that'll be the first one. And we need to actually take the input as well, okay? And let's plot that. So that would be, I'm gonna plot the input and the output after the if condition so we can actually view it better. I'm gonna click run, double click on it, and let's magnify. That actually looks very interesting. So that's what we're expecting. So the first step is, okay, we have, this is basically a sine, a sine wave, right, of magnitude one, okay, that's my input signal. We said that if it's greater than 0.5, it should multiply by two. That's actually pretty interesting because we saw that at that point, the amplitude that's one, it's actually magnified, became two. Okay, that's good. What if it's negative? If it's negative, we're gonna take the whatever signal multiplied by four, if you guys remember. So that's that's actually pretty interesting because that's what we can see here. So it's multiplied by four, and that's why it's minus four. Okay, so signal itself is one, we multiply the signal by four, okay? Else, if any of these conditions take place, what we're gonna do, they're gonna set it to 10, and they, these are the peaks we are seeing here. All right, that's great. So that's pretty much how can you implement an actual logic within Simulink. I hope you guys enjoyed that project and see you in the next section. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you found it useful and informative. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to post them in the comment section. And if you want to get more videos, subscribe to the channel. If you want to get more experience in Simulink, I've created a full Simulink course on Udemy called the Simulink Bible where you will be able to build 10 practical projects covering various topics such as control systems, PID controller, mechanical and electrical system modeling, and simulations. Check it out and see you in the next tutorial.